push an x. One, anything, push a y. Okay. I'm munching up the zeros and ones. If I see a two, I shift over. Do I care what's on the stack if I see a two? No. What if it's the empty stack? What if I see two right at the beginning? Don't want to move over, right? Because it's OK just to see a single two. So no matter what, any, what do I do with the stack here? Any, you leave it alone. Right. Officially, I should push something on it and then pop it off. I should have that extra state. But think of that as a shorthand for doing that double movement. So I leave it alone. And now I'm ready to go into the popping state. Or we'll call it the matching state, because that's really what it is. Matching or popping. And now as I read symbols, I will be matching them off in reverse order to the palindrome. So I'm hoping to find things like 0, zero, zero, zero x pop. pop. And one y pop. If I hit a z when I'm looking at a one or a zero, I'm dead, right? That's no good. If I hit a one x, I'm dead. If I hit a zero y, I'm dead. All of those arrows that I'm not drawing in here are implied to go to a dead state. You don't draw them all in on push down machines because there's just a lot of them. And it makes it ugly and messy. So let's assume that the ones that aren't there go to dead states. How do we finish this up and, and succeed? If you are at the end, you empty string, z, leave it. And that means everything matched. I'm done with my string. The stack is empty. I'm ready to move over and accept. If there happens to be more symbols here, I die. OK? Let me stop for questions about this example. This is just one step more complicated than the one before, and not all that much more complicated. But it does show you how you get palindromes now. Questions? All right. So now let's do it this way, without the two. Here's how we do it without the two. Let's think about what this means. This is really a non-deterministic machine. How come? It's because at this point, if you see a 1 or a 0, and something's on the stack, you don't know whether to do this arrow and push, or whether to ignore the 1 or 0, thinking of it as an epsilon, and switching over to the state. You have a real choice here. This represents the choice of every time you read a symbol, am I going to push it on the stack? Have I reached the halfway point? Or have I not reached it yet? You have to guess. Now, if there is a halfway point where things match up, then you can make the guess at this point and get to an accepting state. That's good. That means we definitely accept all the palindromes. We just substitute this movement where the two used to be. The issue that could go wrong here, the reason why, if you're getting a sense, well, how is that so easy? There is a subtlety that could make this not work. And that is, it's possible that when you put this in, other things have a chance to get to the final state that didn't used to. Maybe non-palindromes can get there. Is there any way to get from here to here with a non-palindrome? Well, let's think about it. This state has pushed a bunch of symbols on the stack. Then let's say you decide to go over here. And you match, 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 match. The only way to get to that final state is if everything you pushed on the stack the first time matched with all the su succeeding symbols that you decided to match them with, and there's nothing left as far as the symbols go. Because when you go here, there better not be any symbols left on the, on the machine. So if you just think about what this machine does, it can't accept anything except palindromes, and it accepts all the palindromes, and it's just as easy to write it with the two in there without it, except that now we have non-determinism. So we have, to, we have to cash in on our power here. We couldn't just make it deterministic. But conceptually, it wasn't a big leap. Questions? Yeah, Chris. So to get all of the palindromes, not just the even length ones, we would just go E0 or 1 from that up? What do you think? Chris says, what if you wanted all the palindromes instead of just the even length ones? Then here, instead of guessing you're at the halfway point, 
you would guess that you've hit the middle symbol, and that middle symbol could either be a 0 or a 1. So instead of having an E here, you would have, you wouldn't even have an E. Oh, you want even also. You don't just want odd. Oh, if you want even and odd, then you could have a 0 here, or a 1 here, or an E here. And still, you would get only even or odd palindromes. Yeah, absolutely. And that would be even more non-deterministic if you want to. More choices, three choices at this point. Because you don't know whether you got the even one or the odd one, and you have to guess. Thinking of non-determinism as guessing is a good thing to do if you can would get in that, that mode. Go to, would that go to three yeah. different two-state sections? Like, would there be three errors out of No, because I think after you make the guess, you want to do the same thing afterwards. So it would look like this. It would look like this. Well, I would just add it on the same arrow. Zero, any, any, one, any, any. Just You would just add it right you down. Work them together like that. Yes. It, it, they really mean different arrows, but it's just, yeah. yeah. Uh, Neil, you had a question? Who had a question? Oh, yeah. Can you convert this into a non-deterministic machine? No. <laughs> no. Non-deterministic pushdown machines cannot be converted, generally speaking, into deterministic machines. You can't do the same trick we did before. And the reason we can't do the same trick we did before is because before, this is a really, really important question. So I'm not just, uh, maybe I should slow down with this answer. It's a really important answer. You know what, I'm going to hold off because I'll talk about it in a minute. It's very important. It's going to be the next thing we're going to talk about, the relationship between determinism and non-determinism. You really need non-determinism here. You can't do this with a deterministic pushdown machine. There's no way to do it. You can't make that guess and get it right. You have a question, Michael? Can these machines do WW? This means all the strings whose first halves are the same as their second halves. Mm -hmm. So they can't. They're too stupid. If you had two stacks, you need two stacks. Two stacks, you could stack. certainly do this. Mm -hmm. Right. But you can't do it with one stack. If you try the same strategy and you push the first half on the stack, mm -hmm. then you got it in the wrong order. Could you do this with a two-way machine? A machine that can go back? Yes, you could, because it can read it backwards. Remember I told you that if you make these things two ways, you actually increase power? So that's an example of that. It sort of gives you another stack. It's not exactly, no, not quite, quite another stack. Because a two-way a two -way pushdown machine is not quite as powerful as a Turing machine. Right. But it's more, well. The interesting thing is a two-way deterministic machine. Let me show you a picture. Non-deterministic pushdown machine. Deterministic pushdown machine. I just told you that, that making this two ways, you know, sometimes gives you more things that you couldn't do before. So a two-way non-deterministic pushdown machine, you know, can do a lot. And a two-way deterministic pushdown machine can do more than a deterministic pushdown machine. But here's what it looks like. A two-way deterministic pushdown machine is bigger, but there are some things that are here. Looks like this. Let me see if I can make the picture right. Uh, this is two-way deterministic machine. A two-way deterministic machine has some things that can't be done with a non-deterministic one-way machine. But there are some things that a non-deterministic one-way machine, or excuse me, there are some things some things a two-way machine can do that non-deterministic machines can't do, and things that non-deterministic machines with one way can do that two-way deterministic machines can't do. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's not just this containment thing anymore. Suddenly, it starts to spread out. Remember that picture Mike Sipser put up on the board with, with all those levels, and then they started to cross over each other? And he was at a different level. He was in the co-NP and RP and all these other classes. But, but people who do his kind of research they live in that world of, of trying to figure out the relationship between the classes. And, and you see diagrams like this all the time. Yeah, Chris? Does it actually encompass all of the Oh, yeah, it does. I should write it like this. Um, yeah, it does. That's better. You're right, right. Anyway. That's a side thing. You can like make a machine with a cube rather than a stack. Is that a different kind of thing? No, that's an exam question. <laughs> 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 what do you think? What do you think about a Q? How many stacks can a Q simulate? Can a Q simulate a stack at all? If you wanted to do pushing and popping like a stack and all you had was a Q, 